everybody. Welcome to the Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matthew Weber. I'm joined by Martin Burke. How are you doing, Martin? Doing well, Matt. How's yourself? Another week. Uh, very... You know, it's actually... Like, the last time we talked, it was like negative nine degrees. And we had like two feet of snow on the ground. Now it's like 50 degrees. So we're coming on to spring, which is making me happy. Oh, excellent. Yep. So what have you been doing in Linux the last couple of weeks, Martin? Not a lot, to be quite truthful. I've had a lot on with work and and whatnot, so I haven't even changed distro. That's how bad it's been. Mm-hmm. Um, so nothing major to speak about, to be quite truthful, of any interest to anyone. So how about yourself? What what, what you been up to? Well, I got a new camera. Uh, it does an El Cheapo from Amazon that I've been having some problems with. Look. Apparently, there's no camera software for Linux for any webcam ever uh, that I've been able to find. So I've been trying to figure out how to get it to stop autofocusing, which is it's a it's a weird problem to have. So that's basically what I've been doing. And I did switch distros <laughs> this week, but Jeez. ended up right back to where I was. So what did you switch to? I didn't see. Well, I went from all right. So. I, I was on Manjaro, and then I got sick of Manjaro, so I decided to go to regular Arch. That did not work very well, and then I, so I decided I'd just go back to Arco, which I was on for ages. Yeah. And I was on that for like two or three days, and ended up having some light DM problems. Uh, it turned out there's a bug in that, so I I decided I was gonna install. What did I go to? Some Debian-based distro. I can't even remember. It might have been MX Linux, but I can't, I can't remember. I was there for like a couple hours. I missed the AUR too much, and, and came back to the, came back to Arco. This is all in the same day, by the way. <laughs> and then I came back to Arco, and the bug for LightDM was still there. I ended up getting some help from the developers. Ended up switching to SDDM. It was fine, and that's where I'm at now. So it, it, it went gigantic circle. I started on Arco, went through a whole bunch of dist- different distros, ended up back on Arco. So. Mind you, interesting you said you're having uh, problems with your webcam. I'd actually um, reclaim my webcam that I was using for Zoom meetings and whatnot from my son's computer that runs Windows. Popped it in, right? Stuck up Smile or Cheese, whatever it's called, on different distros. And I had just a massive line going straight the way down it. And it was literally like, you know, the skateboard videos with a fisheye camera. Mm. It was like that because it's a HD wide camera. And it, it was just like, all oh, right, shall I have a look for some software? And I thought, it's going to be a rabbit hole because it is like a, a Chinese camera, which, which unfortunately does work quite well with Windows. No doubt I'll get it work. It was just a... The line just put me off, let alone the fish eye business with it. But yeah, nice to see someone else having problems like that. But yeah, I think the camera that I got doesn't even have a brand name. <laughs> like, a, like I, I got it on Amazon, and I'm pretty sure that because they have like 2021 HD web camera was the name of it. Like I'm yeah. sure it's just parts bin or something. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's probably mine as well. It was webcam and mic. Um, so Linux picked up the mic, no problem, and the camera. To be fair, but it was just a, a picture. I mean, I'll get it resolved, but hopefully I won't have to use any Zoom or anything like that soon. So, excellent. Yeah, that'd be okay. nice. So, crosses we bear. Yeah. All right. So let's jump into the contact information. You, contact information info, whatever. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at the LinuxCast. I'm at MTWB on Twitter. Martin's Martin Twit to you. Uh, you can subscribe to us, all of our feeds and social stuff by at going to linuxcast.org. You can contact via e- contact us via email, linuxcast at gmail.com. You can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. And I'd like to take a moment to thank Devon C. and Marcus B. for being our patrons. And then also don't forget to support us on YouTube and subscribe by su- going to youtube.com slash linuxcast. We're very, very close to 400 subscribers, so I'm oh, pretty so excited about that. that. Yeah, it's been a pretty good few months. Anyway, so every single week, Martin and I choose a a news link each. Sometimes it's news, sometimes it's whatever. Uh, Martin, what did you find this week? Well, what I found this week is a Linux from the Linux Mint blog. So it was a call to arms 
back in February the 20th, but I think a couple of news, um, Linux news sites have picked it up since. Um, it's basically, the, there is uh, between 5 and 30% of Linux Mint users still on 17. I mean, the current's 20, well, 20.1. And um, also 30% of users apply updates in less than a week. I mean, I, I can understand, especially if uh, someone wants to is coming off Windows or you, you're stuck in on an auntie's uh, relatives or a friend's machine. And there you go. That's all working. There's your internet. There's your Word documents. Maybe it's just a case of you've just people just forgot to show them top right hand corner how to update your machine, or it may just be the case that um, people just have it on older machines, not connected to the internet. But I think they got the telemetry from um, Yahoo, which I'd found out that's why the page looks so, um, well, let's face it, um, early twenty. Uh, early 20s. Um, so they got some telemetry from there. Nothing um, insidious about it. It's just that when you install... Um, Firefox, you have the Linux Mint site come up and obviously it reports what um, bits and pieces that you're on. So it's just a call to arms really, just uh, that caught my eye just for people to remind other people that they may have stuck a Linux Mint on and maybe any other distros just to um, remind them to keep it updated in terms of security. How about yourself? What caught your eye? Well, I just, before we move on, oh, uh, sorry. what's just interesting is that... Um... They're saying that they might actually force people to update some things, right? Yes. Yep. Um, that's going to rub a lot of people the wrong way. Well, it's going to be hard because you'd have to update it to get the mandatory update, if you know what I mean. You're going to have to update it, or whether from 21 um, it, it's mandatory or they they set it at monthly intervals to... Um, I'm guessing it'll just be a tick off system security updates and different things like that. I don't think it'll let, um, well, they wouldn't be able to police it, would they, if they said, right, you all need to update now because I, I don't know, it just doesn't. I mean, obviously, we want to be as safe and secure as possible on it, but yeah, I think good luck with that one. But yeah, whether it is just. Um, I mean, you, you have it flick up in the corner anyway, don't you? Have this many updates? So. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not gonna it's not gonna matter so much for Linux Mint, but I mean, it would never fly for other distributions that are big in like enterprise because, I mean, it, the enterprise market or whatever they don't want to update ever. <laughs> I mean, so it, they literally had to crawl claw yeah. them away from Windows XP and Windows Seven. They and they fought you know tooth and nail in order to stay on those things forever and ever. I mean, I'm sure there's some corporates out there that are still using Windows XP, and I know there's many out there that still use Windows 7, so it's probably the well, same our, in the Linux market. All our cash machines run uh, Windows XP over here. I guess they're doing the States as well, the ATMs. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, I think it's, I read that somewhere. too much money to <laughs> replace them. <Yeah. laughs> but if someone does get hold of it, get on the inside and um, manage to hack it, they're in trouble, but it's pointless um, upgrading them all. It's just not worth their money. It works for them. If someone does manage to um, infiltrate it via USB, it, it's only going to be that machine, as far as I'm aware, looking at the statistics when I checked it ages ago, that they're willing to take the hit, hit on the one machine. But, yeah, yeah, a lot of corporations still use XP. I miss XP, actually. So that's quite <laughs> good. It's just... Uh, Windows got brighter and bolder. And there well, we go. that's another story. It's <laughs> definitely the best Windows. Let's face it. That's not really yeah. saying all that much. All right, so mine this week was uh, GNOME 40 has entered beta stage, and it can now be you know tested by anybody. Uh, the reason why I wanted to just talk about this is just because we really haven't talked about GNOME 40 yet, and it's going to be a fairly big uh, UI change when it eventually comes out. It'd be in, and I've, I've been talking about this on a, on a few of the videos. Uh, it, it's curious to me uh, how Ubuntu will go through and in, implement this change, if at all, because Ubuntu has looked the same since, like, 2006. I mean, they've changed themes, but yeah. they've had the same basic layout, the icons along the side and the 
bar along the top. That's the way Ubuntu looks. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if they follow any of the GNOME 40 stuff. Have you seen GNOME 40 yet? I saw a, a quick peek. Aren't they doing um, dark theming as standard or moving on to that? Well, that might be Ubuntu. Ubuntu said they might go through and do dark theme by default, but GNOME 40 has the... They'd move the uh, dock from the side to the bottom, and it's only visible when you get into the activities mode. And the activities... Remember, you know in GNOME how the um, workspaces used to be along the side? Now they're yeah. moving it along the top. And it's kind of doing kind of like an elementary OS kind of activity oh, view. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, it's gonna. Be, it's not so different that it's like radical change or anything like going from GNOME two to GNOME three, but it's definitely different than what it's been for the last few years. Yeah, let's not take a look at that. I've never really been a fan of GNOME, but I don't know who yeah, is. I, 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 yeah. I actually, I mean, a lot of people are good fans. I, I just don't understand those people. Yeah, I think it, what what as I say, what fits in with your workflow, mm -hmm. <laughs> isn't it really? I mean, you, you could get used to anything, especially yourself with your key bindings and whatnot. But yeah, it's there's it's, it's obviously yeah, a lot of people that use it. But if it makes it easier to use, um, well, I think it looks nice. It, it's just I don't know that it would be for me or not. I, I've never been a fan of. When, really, once you go to a window manager, I just don't see myself ever going back to a desktop environment. And if I were to go back, I'd go to X or uh, to KFC. Uh, I almost KFC called K. I was going to go to the KFC. It. Yeah, <laughs> you can tell it's almost dinner time. <laughs> um, I, if I were going to go to, I was going to, I'd go to KDE. Um, just because I could, you know, customize it as much as I needed to to make it completely mine. Yeah, without having to do something you. crazy. Or I'd go to KFC. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good to me. Yeah. I mean, when in doubt, it's either Linux or chicken. You can't have both. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's jump into the main topic. This week's main topic was we're talking about backing up your files. Martin, what do you got for us? Yeah, well, backing up, I was just going to talk about in terms of what I myself use and, and see exactly what thoughts that you've got on your own backup I mean I do try and keep regular backups um, I mean at the end of the day it's like the olden days where we'd have um, various different videos and this and, and our DVD movies that we, we backed up to our hard drive I mean none of that really happens now or through other sources shall we say um, so more a case now um, obviously you can get it from your know, Netflix and you've got Spotify things like that YouTube um, it's mainly obviously keeping hold of the, the things that you'll never ever get back like your family photos and, and important documents or scans of important documents I mean I, I always um, I'll always keep one in the cloud I'll always keep a couple of backups on hard disk and also have um, backups on USB I know they say that you should send it off to somebody so it obviously isn't on your property. So heaven forbid you ever have a fire, you're going to lose everything. But I'm hedging my bets on I've got everything I need on the cloud, i.e. cloud services. How do you do your um, physical backups? All right, so I do external hard drives and I have like yeah. four of them. And they're all here, so if I have a fire, I'm screwed. Um, mm -hmm. But I do have like my pictures and stuff backed up to Google Photos or whatever. Yeah. Um, and a lot of my writing is up in Google Drive and Dropbox and stuff. And P I have PCloud at one point, and I still have stuff there. And I, you know, there's I'm sure I had something on Apple iCloud or whatever when I was running Mac. So I mean, I have stuff all over the place. I have not found a mass online backups solution that works good for me there's not a lot of them that work on linux first of all and if i'm going to do an like an, a massive online backup thing i want it to be all in one place you know i don't want to I, I don't want any restrictions i want unlimited I, and a lot of like so like backplace has an unlimited 
service, but it only works on Mac and PCs. So if you want to use Linux, you have to use their CLI tool, and they charge that storage the same way Amazon S3 charges, and it would be like $400 a month. I don't have $400 a month to spend. <laughs> I mean, that's a that's a rent payment. <laughs> that's just ridiculous. Um, so there's a um, like a crash plan or something that works on Linux that has unlimited backup and it's fairly cheap. But their software is god awful. It's just not good. Um, other than that, I've not like I said I've not found a good mass backup online storage for Linux yet. Um, I want to, but I mean. It has to simultaneously be really good, but also cheap enough that I can afford it. You know, so. Well, yeah. I, I mean, um, prices are coming down every year. It's ridiculous. Interesting about you saying your um, hard drives. I mean, obviously, we'll treat ourselves now and again to a bigger hard drive. I'll always keep hold of and stick a label on when I took the hard drive out, leave the data on it, transfer that onto my new hard drive. Obviously, with distro hopping and, and things like that, I've got two hard drives, well, SSD drives, sorry, in my PC, <clears throat> and I'll just keep shifting the home over, sorry, the, the, my home directory over to my physical drive in there. Sorry, so I've got one SSD, one hard disk drive, um, and then copy the photos back over to the other one. So I've always got two relatively recent ones on my machine currently I, I use Google Photos also so at the end of the day that's, that's the only camera that I do use now my phone so I'll back mm -hmm. up to the cloud and then I can back up to my PC as and when I want to stick an audio book on or anything like that um, I have been also when you said P cloud so I, I use P cloud yeah, put my teeth back in P cloud so you get 7 gigabytes free it's quite popular with Linux users as you say um, none of them have got the best integration uh, of just a quite simple drag and drop I mean, obviously there's ways and rounds of, of doing it but when I was using P cloud a bit more often it, it did seem a, a, quite cumbersome whether that's changed now or there's a, a a decent some decent software that literally i just want to move this folder onto there and do it i don't want to go through the web ui and, and upload things like that I mean, they have their uh, linux they have their linux software but it takes a lot of resources when i add it on on my computer it takes like a gigabyte or more of ram and oftentimes it would especially on like if you're using arch and it doesn't control its own updates. All the updates would come through the AUR from Pac-Man. The it wouldn't register that there's like it, it would no, excuse me there it would register that there was a new update. It would remind you every like 30 seconds, and, and you can't get rid of it. It was annoying. So that's the reason why I stopped using PCloud because it was just really annoying. Yeah, so I'd use PCloud uh, just to drop some important things in um, some photos. So I've got that. I mean, you got seven gig to play about with so i mean there's a, there's a lot there free um you've got 500 gigabyte um for 159 pound two terabyte for 309 pound and i believe that's for a lifetime i mean that isn't too bad but the rate that file size is increasing who knows um we both use dropbox so you get two gigabytes free with that which is just, I mean, seriously. Come on, Dropbox. Two gigabytes? Why even bother? But <laughs> you, you can increase it to 18 gigabyte with referrals. I don't know that many people. <laughs> I'm a loner. I have so many complaints, neither, Martin. Yep, neither do I. But I'm just saying I just searched eBay for um, Dropbox and I found me some referrals for about £2. So basically I've got 18 gig with Dropbox free forever until they change the rules. So Dropbox isn't too bad. Um, it's okay, but 2 gig, gigabytes measly. I mean, it's, it's been that way for years and years, hasn't mm -hmm. it, I believe. Um, the one that I favour at the moment is... Google One. 
Yeah, it's that's what just I had to. Yep. Easy. It does what it says on the tin. I'm not too bothered about. I've got no particular data on there. It literally is photos. I know there's a hiccup before with the photos when people was backing them up. I don't know bits of other people's photos, but it's literally it is what it is. Well, I ended up um, having to. I've, I ended up having to buy Google One because I ran out of storage for email. I mean, that's the only reason really I'm paying for it is because I went over the 15 gigabytes for email because I've been using Gmail since it came out. So oh, right. I got all this Just stuff. Added up. So I decided to um, – so because we're all on uh, Android phones anyway, I um, decided to pay for it. Um, it's a hundred gig for sixteen pounds over here, um, but it's um, two hundred gig for twenty five pound a year, and I can add my family members to it, so we can share all files or this and that, which isn't bad. And you got the Google Photos, I know. Um, they're moving away from the photos and, and just trying to cut down on the storage, but. Google one, it, it just works nice and easy. And I use a program called Overgrive. Um, you do get a free trial, so you can try it out for a month and see how you find it. I have noticed with things like the uploading to Google and, and things like that, it, it does take quite some time. Uh, but Overgrive is quite nice. I think I paid $5 for that. And it literally um, starts up with um, boot up. Um, I can drag and drop into a folder. And it, it does it in the background and, and leave it to go on there. Um, oh, sorry. It was 200 gig for £25 a year and 2 terabytes for £80 a year. That's where I had the 2 terabytes. And you, you're not going to run out of 2 terabytes anyway. And finally, which we've all probably had at one point, is Microsoft OneDrive. So any Hotmail account, you get a five, free five gigabytes with it. So you could just open up different accounts, I'm guessing, to get that. I mean, if you want a subscription to get your office tools and stuff like that, and you'll get one terabyte storage, is £60 a year. I think it works For like that. And you get that for like five people too, so that's really cool. Yeah, so you can add your family. So I mean, it, it, it is quite good though, um, especially if you are part of the ecosystem of yeah. um, spreadsheets and, and things like that, or if you want to create a, a web app <laughs> um, to use Excel. But yeah, the Microsoft Drive, I mean, it is quite good the way they work. I mean, I, I know it's a pain in the bum when you log into, you've got to put your Hotmail, because if it's anything like my Hotmail, it, it takes me about 10 minutes to type it all in. Um, but I mean, it does back everything up, even your wallpaper on your desktop, but it it backs literally everything that you would need. And, and to be fair, it has saved me a couple of times. Even though it's 2 gig, it has saved a couple of pictures with... Uh, various windows crashes and stuff like that but yeah as you say one terabyte 60 quid a year with office um up to five family members um to share yeah it, it's reasonable is there any others that you i mean i've obviously i haven't got into mega uploads and, and things like that um, yeah I, I think which I isn't tried, too bad mega yeah, i think upload, i tried but, mega for like a day or something i don't remember why i didn't stay with it so I do. I have the Google thing. I don't upload anything to it from Linux unless I absolutely have to because I didn't want to pay for Overdrive because I didn't know if I was going to stick with Google or not. And yeah. the the free options there's one called Grive, and I used that for a little while back when I first started using Linux full time, and uh, it deleted a whole bunch of stuff off my Google Drive. <laughs> like mm. that's just that was not good. Um. So I've pretty much stayed away from that. And, uh, basically, my backup, my way of doing backups is I have a, a cron job that takes place every day at midnight. It just takes my entire home directory and puts it on the external hard drive that I have hooked up to my computer. That's basically what I do. Um, really, I have my photos in, in Google Drive or in the Google Photos and... Um, 
most of my writing and stuff that I do is also, you know, other places. The only thing that if everything, you know, crashed or if I had a fire that I would miss that I don't have is probably the YouTube videos that I've been doing for the last three or four months. I have about 100 gigabytes worth of stuff that I need to figure out how I'm going to upload somewhere. I just haven't figured it out yet. Um, I could probably just go ahead and shell out a little bit more money for Google and put them up in the Google thing. But I'm not sure if I really want to do that. Uh, I, I mean, I know a lot of people like create like a S3 bucket and put their stuff in there, but it just it seems like it gets so expensive, you know. And really, yeah, I, I I could deal with something that's inconvenient to to like deal with. Like if I just had to do this once a month and it was manual and I had to enter a command or something. Uh, you know, I I don't care about inconvenience. And more, I mean, price is really the place where I you know. I have to look for first poor people you know yeah i mean as time goes on it, it it's just going to drop and drop isn't it i mean not so much the price they'll keep the prices roughly about the same but they'll just keep increasing the uh, gigabyte uses oh and i forgot an, another big player um if you've got amazon prime um you get unlimited photo storage and i've just logged in to check I've got um, 10 gigabytes used for video and file storage. So that's not too bad if you're part of um, Amazon Prime. I'm not too sure whether you get the free. I don't think you get the. I think it just is to Prime members to get the unlimited photos, but um, files and video you do get 10 gigabyte, which is uh, a plus of having Prime, to be fair. Mm, yeah. So that's another one. So, I mean, uh, there's plenty of free Amazon. choices to spread it out your files. But if you've got copious amounts of um, YouTube or edited, edited footage, you, you, you're going to have to spend the books for yeah, I know. off-site Yeah, I Probably storage. if you're a – I was going to say probably if you're a Linux guy you or a tech guy at all, you probably just have – I mean, if you're going to – just go free, just get free of everybody's and then spread it out amongst. So you have like two gigabytes on Dropbox and seven mm. on P Cloud and just have them all running in the background. <laughs> that sounds really complicated. Yeah, set up but... some, some random script. Just stick your photos on Amazon Prime so that you got your free storage there. Um, whoever you would trust with your personal data, I, I really don't know, to be fair. I've got a bit on... Um, Google, but I've got two-factor fact, authentication and everything on that, so that's relatively safe, touch wood, he says. Uh, but yeah, I was thinking about that. If only somebody could make some program that just spreads it all out ev evenly between um, these, mega upload, countless how many others. Digu, I think I've paid for as well. I've got it on some offer. A terabyte cost for life cost me about Eighty pounds, which wasn't too bad. I've literally never used it because it takes about five minutes to d upload a one megabyte picture, so I won't be using that. So that's a, that's a waste of eighty quid. You know, get a bit faster, um, and that's about it. Um, do you back up um, to USB or just drive a trust the physical drives more? Yeah, it's just through a, a USB external drive is the way. I I have like uh, a right, yeah. Western Digital thing that I just got because my old one I had like an eight terabyte one for like a year, and it did not last worth the damn this time. Uh, before that, I had a four terabyte one. That one's still going strong. I have that one locked in a fire safe box. Um, uh, and then I have one from like college that was like a uh, hell, it's probably like a hundred and fifty gigabyte one. I mean, that <laughs> was ages and ages ago. Uh, that one's somewhere around here. Uh, but I had to get a 16 gigabyte or 16 terabyte one from Amazon not too long ago uh, to replace this 8 terabyte, and that's just the one that I have, only one I have hooked up to my computer. But I do have in my compute inside the box of my computer, I have a, I have the terabyte one that ha has the boot drive, and then I have a blank two terabyte one that I probably will use to back up the the videos at least so i have at least i'm in two places in case the drive fails at least yeah um so i have i'm i have dri hard drives all over the place it's ridiculous i don't yeah, know what I've i think got a large, i've got a large collection of, uh, my oldest one i think's um 
20 megabytes. Weighs about two pounds in weight. It's one of my <laughs> first hard drives, 20 megabytes. And I used to go through deleting all the Windows help files so I could stick um, little games on and then um, various, trying to squeeze as much space out of this minute drive. But now, you're not going to run out of drive space if, if you run out of drive space uh, nowadays. It's, it's, You've just got either too much to watch or the resolution's blooming. 24K, I mean, I bet you're not touching anywhere near, or are you? The capacity no. on any any of your drives, let's face it, it, it literally is nice now just to drag one folder with all your documents, everything, just plop it on the other without going through, deleting. I mean, obviously I've got duplicates galore, but I'd rather have duplicates than nothing spaced out. When I, all my drives. when I switched over from the 8 terabyte to the four, the 16, I did go through and delete a whole bunch, because I always do, I don't always go through and do like a, a, a full backup on my stuff, usually it just, you know, it's the kind of like a delta kind of thing, it just re- takes anything I've deleted off and, you know, replaces the, puts anything on there that I've just, you know, created. So yeah. I don't have you know one f- whole one for every day. That would like be ridiculous. But every once in a while I'll go through and create a new folder and do a new, new thing. And I, so I did go through and took off like a whole terabyte worth of old you know stuff because I had a whole bunch of VM v, uh, virtual machine stuff on there and um, yeah like yeah. every ISO ever I've ever downloaded I got rid of all that stuff. So I did delete like a whole terabyte worth of stuff when I transferred over. But I still have. Like, I mean, I'm not. I have like I don't know, three terabytes worth of stuff, and most of that is going to be, uh, videos. You know, like movies and yeah. TV shows. And if if that stuff went away, I mean, I understand there would be some people who would be who'd care that their TV and shows and stuff that they've you know, but. For me, if I if, if that stuff went away, I would just re-download it. I mean, it's not as if I mean this is going to sound it's not as if I I mean some of it obviously I've paid for, but most of it no I haven't. So that's just the way I mean. It, it, it's it's on the internet somewhere, isn't it? I, right. I just gave <laughs> up on my I, I had that many music videos that I'd um, downloaded in the past before YouTube that I'd clung hold of for years. It's a case of. Why am I holding on to these? It's YouTube, say I could <laughs> watch watch them all on YouTube. And well, yeah, stuff I have like, like, it, it, I have like 50, 50 gigabytes of music that I never use. I, like, I it's pronounced Spotify, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm YouTube Premium, so I use um, YouTube, and it's a case of it, it's like back to the, old, the the days when people stopped buying CDs and, and was ripping them all. Mm-hmm. It's just so much easier just to pay a subscription than do any sort of ripping or anything like that. I mean, we ended up just getting rid of all our CDs. We're in the process of buying them all back now, slowly but surely, because we still quite like sticking the CD on. Only a record, I guess. Well, yeah, people are going back to vinyl now, yeah? (laughs) I'd saw something they're trying to bring eight track back. Someone who released an eight track. No, they need to start. No, Real that's not. Real. Those things failed so easily. Yeah. Um, they just broke all the time. That I mean, it'd be like going back to. I mean, cassette tapes were a little bit more hardy, but those. I mean, how many times did you use a cassette tape and then have to dig the tape out of your player because it ate it? And I mean, it's like going back to VCR. That's, <laughs> that's what you got your pencil for. And get yes. your pencil back in there. But it's interesting yeah. what you say about like uh, when you went through your backups. Like, I was doing what you're saying. I was transferring to help. I thought, why is this folder so big? Let's have a look. It was just full of ISOs or this and that. You just think, I'll keep that one just in case. I'll try that out later on. Or you'll try it out and you'll download the next version. And you just have a a gathering of them, which which doesn't help. But yeah, I did have untold amount of Linux distros uh, downloaded. Yep, all good fun. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the apps of the week. So I, I think we could just both agree. Make sure you back up your shit. Oh, yeah, sorry. basically, especially <laughs> photos. I've got stung before and lost a, a year's worth of photos, and it's just yeah. You you can guarantee I'm 
I'll go through many of my photos, but there's a lot of photos in there that add memories and end of the day, just, yeah, back up your shit. Yes. Um, all right, m- moving on to the apps of the week. Uh, Martin, your app of the week. <laughs> um, Sysmon Task, this is. So, uh, if I'm talking about um, sticking people over from um, Windows onto Linux, this is a system manager clone, uh, system monitor clone of Windows Task uh, Task Manager. It even comes with the graphs and process killer installed. It literally is a one on one copy of um, the um, system uh, Task Manager, if you can remember that on Windows. So it, it's there for anyone that wants to look at I mean there's untold system resources on Linux but that's what really caught my eye to be fair recently I haven't really had much uh, to look through and that's the one that um, I thought oh that's a bit quirky for Linux people that hate Windows stick that one in (laughs) how about yourself what did you find alright so this is like an old one that I've been using for a while and I I'm trying to think of I feel like I've done this one before but I'm just going to mention again uh LastPass has been doing there's some crazy stuff. They went through and changed their oh, free thing. Yes. So, uh, oh, good right? about that. Because I, I do use it on my computer and my phone, and I don't know, is it March the 18th? Whichever yeah, like, thing you log into is going to be the one that's going to hold your account. So yep. I've, I've made two decisions whether to log in with my phone, where I need it more, or the PC, which is just easier. It's or I mean, you could pay, but I yes, mean... of course, I saw that. Oh, and we've got a percentage. Of... <coughs> I mean, it's like it's really hard when they've given you something for free for years. Yes, to then yes. go through and force you to pay for it. You know, especially when I mean, it, I mean, I may be remembering this wrong, but LastPass would go through. They used to charge you to sync your stuff. I mean, that, that's the way it used to be. But it used to be like – it was like two bucks a month or something. And then they changed it so that everybody got sync for free. And now they're going back to, to, to you know charging, and they've made it so completely complicated. <laughs> so, so my pick is Bitwarden. So Bitwarden is free and uh, – all right, so it's free – like beer and free as in freedom open source. Now they do have a paid tier where you get like use of Yubi keys and stuff like that. Um, but otherwise everything is open source. You can actually go in and like read all the code if you wanted to get into, I think it's in C sharp. So if you're, you know, a developer or whatever, you could actually go in and audit the code if you wanted to. And, and it's not like other open source ones like, uh, NPass is partially open source, but there's some like, server magic or whatever that goes on in the background that's proprietary. Uh, this one's completely open source. So it's also, like I said, it's also free and it's available on every platform you want. Very well designed. Um, I haven't had any problems with it. It's, like, it's I, I actually like it better than LastPass because the web interface for Bitwarden is better. The application for Linux is native instead of some weird Electron app. Uh, the Android app is very good. I haven't tried the iOS app because I don't have an iPhone, but I'm sure it's just as good. So that's my pick. Yeah, I mean, I've got a bit, Bitwarden membership that I'd signed up to to um, use with my YubiKey. Um, I might well um, go back to Bitwarden because you can just export your last pass into a CSV and import mm-hmm. it into Bitwarden. Uh, once you get your head around it, it, it literally is a 15, 20 minute job to uh, transfer all your last pass stuff across. I think I might be doing that because I can't be doing either going to my phone for some random password for a site that I haven't logged into for four or five years and vice versa. Yeah. But there you go. They got me well and truly. I'm not going to pay for it. Um, I mean, I, 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 would, I would if it was a, a reasonable amount, but I just well, want to pay you... 100 quid for a lifetime and just job done. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, if they gave you something that was more, you know, but all they're actually doing is taking away stuff and forcing you to pay for it. They're not giving you anything extra that you didn't get before. You're getting – you're just paying for stuff that you already had. <laughs> it's very – it's they did not handle it well. They're – I mean – I, I wouldn't be surprised if they lose like half of their, you know, membership, their 
the members because it's just I mean why would you stay I mean and, uh, unless you literally only use it on one platform just I mean I understand yeah. that you I mean you want companies and and developers and stuff to make money I mean I'm not against people you know people charging for stuff that's not where I'm coming from where I'm uh, it's just more you know <laughs> Like I said, like I said before, it was really, really hard to have something for free, and then all of a sudden not have it anymore because the company decided they wanted to charge for it. It's much easier to come up with new features and then you know say, hey, you wanna, we have these yeah, awesome new features, you know? Yeah, or just tag in some. Um, well, we've got some photo storage. Add this to your account. To ju- just do it as add-ons. I mean, yes. yeah, I, I would pay with it, but I don't want to tie in. To a monthly payment just to hold on to my password. I'd rather just use a CSV um, spreadsheet on my computer and use copy and paste all the time. <laughs> you can't get yeah. much safer than that unless someone actually does get into my PC. But yeah, I might uh, give Bitward another try. I was a bit too used to LastPass and it, and it was uh, working for me greatly. But yeah, I think I might be going back on to Bitward and then. Uh, See what those guys have got to say. Obviously, um, if you like what you're uh, getting, an upgrade to the um, pre premier version. I think it's about like ten, twelve dollars a month. You get um, something like I'd like to say a gigabyte. It's been a while since I've uh, been on, and you can just add to it if you want for file storage. You're talking but, about you're talking about Bitwarden, the, the yeah. cost for Bitwarden. It's ten dollars yeah. a year. Yeah, ten dollars. Yeah, I mean, yep, for a year. Yep. Last pass was, I, I wouldn't like to say how much last pass, but I just looked at it and I just laughed. Yeah. Well, that ten dollars a year is nothing at the end of the day. So it's, yeah, I'll be okay. it, but, yeah. I, I'm with you on the lifetime though thing. If Bitward said, "Hey, you want to give us a hundred bucks and we don't have to ever pay us again?" Yeah. I'd definitely do yeah. that. I mean, because I mean, I want to support them because they're open source and stuff. But I mean. I really don't want to have to re- like uh, forget that I'm paying, and then like a year from now, like what what's this mysterious ten dollar charge on my credit card? All right, anyways, yeah. we've we've gone a bit over, but that's okay. Um, so that's it for us this time. Coming up next time, uh, I'm actually so we're gonna talk about uh, printer support on Linux. <laughs> I mean, could I get any more nerdy than printer support on Linux? We're gonna talk. I can. This is I mean, this is my topic too. I, why do I want to talk about this? Anyway, so that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time. Right, so cheers, guys. Take care.